OMG, that's so random, is a phrase that I heard a lot in my youth, even for things that weren't random. Something totally expected could happen, and someone would respond with that. You know what, we need a new word for random, okay? Because random has been tainted by so many people using it for things that aren't random. It's like literally. Okay, literally doesn't mean literally anymore because so many people have used literally for things that aren't literal. So now, I'm literally going to do something random. I'm going to make the most random redstone contraption I possibly can, making use of lots of different types of randomizers. Now, how do you activate the most random randomizer in Minecraft? Well, of course, the answer to that is randomly. Okay, I can't have a button that I press that activates the randomizer. No, the randomizer has to activate when it wants to activate, and it's going to do that through... A randomizer. It really feels like I'm overusing that word in this video. <laughs> now the way that I'm going to activate this thing randomly is I'm going to make use of farming. So not only are we going to have a randomizer, it's also going to double up as a small bamboo farm. You see bamboo grows quite quickly, so we can use that to get an output making use of observers which we can then run into our randomizer. So let's see, if I place in some blocks right here and this bamboo grows, then we can run that out into a redstone line. So, I guess I can't really connect all of those up because that will break the system. So, I can take an output from some observers up at the top, and then some blocks, and then some redstone. And then you'll see when the bamboo grows that this redstone line gets activated. So, we can then run that into the next part of our randomizer system. Oh, but before we move on, you may be wondering why I'm using three pieces of bamboo here instead of one. It's just to increase the frequency of activation of the randomizer, because if it was just one piece of bamboo, we'd have to wait for ages. Whereas when you've got three pieces of bamboo, you increase the likelihood of the system activating. Smart, 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 smart. Now it's time to start getting some different outputs into this redstone system. And to do that, we're going to make use of a shulker box randomizer. Now this is going to involve a dispenser, nine different shulker boxes with different numbers of items on the inside of it, and then a red coder out the back to give us different redstone outputs dependent on what shulker box gets dispensed. Everything will be explained in a second. It's a lot easier to demonstrate when I've actually got the redstone in place. And of course I've built it in the wrong location, that's very difficult. And now I've built it in the wrong location once again, that is even more difficult. But the foibles were worth it because we've actually ended up with a really nice little redstone system that is exactly three blocks wide which always makes me happy. And also this system for getting the shulker boxes back up into the dispenser so they can be reloaded, ready to be randomised again again. Quite proud of. I am quite proud. It's, it's quite a nice little system. I love, I love the target block. Right, let's get all these shulker boxes into the mix. So all of these have different numbers of items on the inside of them. There's nine of them in total for the nine different slots in a dispenser. So that should do the trick. And actually, I'm just going to grab myself some redstone lamps so that we can put them next to these redstone torches and see if the system is actually working. So eventually, a piece of bamboo should come in, and that is good. Okay, that is good. I haven't added in the redstone that breaks the shulker box just yet. I'm a little bit upset that Mojang have introduced the skulk sensors because now I keep second guessing whether to say shulker or skulker, and it's really annoying me. So if you hear me stutter on those words from this point forth, you know why. Right, that circuit is now in place, so what is actually happening here? We've got the dispenser with all the different types of shulker boxes on the inside. The color doesn't matter, but the items on the inside do. Now when this dispenser fires, it will place it in front of the comparator, which will take the redstone signal strength and run the output from that into what's known as a red coder. The red coder is a really interesting redstone circuit because it takes the input signal strength and converts it into a single redstone output. So you can see we've got all these redstone torches out the back. It will give a singular redstone output dependent on the signal strength that is inputted, which means that if we get ourselves a shulker box, you can see that quickly we get a single redstone output dependent on the number of items on the inside of the shulker box that is dispensed. And it's random every time because that's the way the dispensers work. Hopefully that explains everything. So currently our system randomly activates and also has eight possible random outputs, but that's not exactly the most random system in all of Minecraft, so we've got a lot of work to do. And you might have to bear with me a little bit here, but I think I've come up with an idea of how we can increase the number of outputs of this thing massively whilst also keeping it relatively compact-ish. Here's what I'm thinking, okay, we send redstone signals outwards, making use of the water trick, which you can actually see working there. You see the soul sand pops up, it creates a bubble elevator that our observer detects, and then we get ourselves a redstone output, and that happens instantly across an infinitely tall water area, so that means that we can send a pulse through to various observers all at the same time, and then we have another randomizer that works at exactly the same time as this first randomizer that will then activate 
or allow an output through a row of this system. Goodness me, it's difficult to explain without it being in place. But it should multiply the number of outputs by 9. So we already have 9 outputs from this thing, so then it's going to be 9 times 9, which means that we are going to have 81, yes, 81 possible outputs from this randomizer system. And we probably won't be stopping there either. It's times like these where I really, really wish I was better at using the clone command. I just feel like my construction process would be considerably quicker. Right, that is all of those in place. Now currently every single one of the rows is switched on. So if the randomizer fires, you can see that we will get a line of redstone outputs. All in a line, in a vertical line. And that is because obviously our red coder is firing and is giving an output through all of them. So now what we have to do is create the other randomizer, which is going to switch off all the rows apart from one. So then we're almost getting an intersection of two randomizers. It might help if you picture this as a graph, okay? If you have a line about the x-axis and a line about the y-axis, and then you randomize the locations of those two lines, the points where they intersect is going to be our output point. Did that make it... Did that make it sound more complicated? That might have made it sound more complicated. Right, let's just try and move on from the explanation and crack on with the doing. The big issue with this system is we've got a lot of vertical height to cover here, so I thought I'd get a little bit creative and we're going to be sending the signal downwards wirelessly. So that means that I've got to send the signal upwards, probably making use of another one of these water systems because I can send that signal instantly. And then I'm going to send it back down, making use of these daylight sensor detector things. The daylight detector things are now all in place, so working backwards, I'm now going to have the red coder up at the top. This is going to be deciding which one of the rows is actually active. And this red coder up at the top is going to be exactly the same as the system that we have down at the bottom here. It's just going to be up there. Oh, but just quickly to show you what these things do, you can see that things are activating and deactivating wirelessly due to the comparators with these daylight sensors. These systems are so cool. They were designed by Raysworks. I love them. Now the red coder up at the top is all in place and also all of the dispenser bits are all in place. So I'm just going to grab my shulker boxes and we can get this thing loaded up. I'm very curious to see if this thing actually works. I think the only thing that could cause an issue is the speed of it. It's not the fastest thing in the world. Let's see, let's see, let's see. If I get all these redstone lamps in so we know which one has activated. Okay, that last one, that has turned off. And then it is turned back on again. I mean, that is... That is... That seems like it is actually going to work. Which is quite interesting. However, did you see how fast that one switched on and off? Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> so obviously we have... We have a few issues to iron out. The main one currently is that... Well, the whole thing doesn't actually work. <laughs> Nothing works. If we just wait for this thing to fire, which should happen any second now... You just have to wait on that piece of bamboo down at the bottom to activate. There it is. So you can see everything fires. But I think I think it's all happening at different times. Which means that we almost have like the lines intersecting, but they're not intersecting. One appears and then disappears, and then the other one appears and then disappears. So they're not intersecting. Just nothing's, nothing's working. But after a lot of fiddling around, I think we've gotten somewhere. All I had to do is increase the pulse length of certain parts of the system, add a bit of a cooldown timer to stop it from kind of reactivating on itself too soon. And that kind of did the trick. So now everything is working. You saw earlier on, we got ourselves a single output. If we just wait a little while longer for the bamboo to grow, there we go. We have got ourselves an output up at the top there. Everything... Everything's working, so we now have 81 outputs coming from our randomizer, which is good. It's pretty good, it's pretty random. Okay, that's a that's a pretty random system, but I definitely think that we can go bigger than this. And it's going to involve a little bit of re-engineering of the front section. I'm going to remove all of this stuff. Don't worry, the bamboo will stick around. It's just not going to be sticking around for the time being. And it's going to involve a little bit of re-engineering of the front section. So this is everything okay so that is going to be our new input all of that stuff is no longer necessary and now we're going to create three more of these things which would give us 162 324 random outputs <laughs> i don't know what this would be useful for what would this be useful for somebody please tell me what this could possibly be useful for I look forward to hearing it. It is pretty random though. You know, you've got to give it to me. And it's also, let's be real here, it's pretty cool looking, isn't it? 
I mean, it already looks pretty cool. So now I've got to connect it up to another randomizer. So the way that we're going to do this now is a bamboo is going to activate a randomizer, which will decide which bank of randomizers we're going to activate. And then that bank of randomizers will fire and then we'll get a random output of one in 81 in that bank. Now this randomizer is slightly different from the other randomizers that we featured so far in the video. This is what's known as a hoe and general item randomizer. And I actually think that's what it's known as. I think that's what I've just called it. But essentially we have a stackable item and then a non-stackable item inside a dropper. When we hit this button right here, it will give a signal output. Now, if the non-stackable item goes up into the hopper, it will give a signal strength of three. So it will output through the left hand side. And then if the stackable item goes up there, it will give a signal strength of one and it will come out the right hand side. So we essentially have a two output randomizer, which is very useful because of course we can chain them together. So we've turned our two output randomizers into a four output randomizer because I've got another two output randomizer which decides which two output randomizer gets activated. There is a whole lot of gibberish in this redstone video, isn't there? There's a lot of sentences that seem like they make no sense. So now the final stage is to once again bring back the trusty bamboo. So this thing will activate randomly without me really knowing when it's going to activate. I wouldn't have it any other way. So everything is locked and loaded everything is ready to go i'm about to flick the lever for the first time that will retract the pistons that will allow our bamboo to grow and we actually just got our first fire straight away there it is it's going to be in that bank and there it is so that is the first output from this gigantic randomizer so now we wait we have to wait for the bamboo to grow okay it has gone down that line it is in this bank it is up there and that was our redstone lamp so this system is now working. We have got, what, 364 possible outputs. It's actually difficult for me to follow where it's going to be. I'm trying my best to read what the redstone is doing and work out what bank it's going to go towards. So it's over here. It is down there. And I missed it, but I saw the redstone lamp fire. <laughs> it's so difficult to zoom in. You have to be so far away. Okay, let's wait. All right, we've got one coming through this side. We have got that. And boom, there we go. <laughs> I've never been so excited for a redstone lamp to fire. Our randomizer is working. This is definitely one of the silliest and I guess most random builds I've ever constructed. It's been really fun. I mean, it has been seriously fun making this whole thing work. It's been a bit of an engineering experiment, but it's been cool. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Boom. Please ignore my booms, all right? You know, I don't know where the booms are coming from. <laughs> I played a lot of Minecraft today. I know, I know that's my go-to excuse, okay? But seriously, I played a lot of Minecraft today. And when you play a lot of Minecraft, you say the word boom a little bit too frequently. <laughs> anyway, this has been fun. See you next time. Boom.